Hi everyone, I'm Christine Josty of Mail Something Pretty and I can't wait to show you this really sweet card. Um, it has a funny name, um, the one I'm, <laughs> it's called a Pop Out Bendy Fun Fold card and you'll see why in a second. So this one has a um, belly bar, a belly band rather, so it comes off and then you open it up and this part, do it right, pops out and it kind of wobbles and shakes. So whoever you send it to can set it on their table or their shelf and it's just a kind of a nice presentation that way. So a nice a nice get well card with a, a bushel of apples. So I want to show you how I made it. So this is a club project that we did this week and I just wanted to share because I love it. So I will tell you that um, it was inspired by Sue Campfield. She, I think, came up with that idea or she learned from someone else and made her spin on it. And so this is my spin on it. Um, and so there's a couple pieces that are integral and then there's a lot of customization. So let's, let's see where I want to start. Um, I will not start with that. I'm going to start with the card base. So some of the things I've already done. Um, I This one's pretty much a lot of real red because I thought of the red apples, which is funny because all, all I eat is Granny Smith, which are green. Uh, so I could make a green version, actually. Um, but I use the Cheerful Basket stamp set. Use the apples in the basket and actually in the words here, too. Um, it's a fun stamp set. It comes with dies that will cut out everything and actually extra dies that do things. But I didn't use them in this card. I only used the stamp set. So the um, card base is the the long one. So it's four and a quarter by 11. And I already scored it. So I'm going to show you actually where. I'm going to fold it just to show you. And I have it on here too. So um, I scored it at two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. So it's like a gatefold card. Um, so it's going to open that. It, but then you have this extra kind of that extra piece in there. And so what I also already did, and again, this is where some of the customization happens. Let me actually kind of put that, let me get everything on here. Hopefully you can see it all. Um, I already embossed, yep, the panels. And I did do tone on tone. It would look very nice if you had, um, you could use pattern paper on the front or you could use a different color. But I chose to do tone on tone with that red. Um, actually, that doesn't line up. Hold on. I cut it. Here we go. Yeah. So I actually cut the paper. Um, I'm going to my ruler because I forget what size it was. I think it was, it was four inches by five and I um, used my the oh geez what's the name of it? it's a new one it's in the holiday catalog with the leaves falling leaves or I don't know the leaf one put it through and then I cut it so that I would have it was just easier that way and then I'd have my two panels that kind of line up so I'm going to put those on there here I thought I was prepared to show you and I forget what all the supplies are called but it's in the holiday catalog the only leaf embossing folder and you can use anything and this is just a subtle a subtle effect um, and I think you could send this any time of year it doesn't have to be apple season which it is now because it's just it's just an effect on the background it's not a primary focus those leaves so then on the inside I have these two panels which are the same size so what size are they? Uh, two and a half. It was half of what I did before. Two and a half by four. And this is the, I think it's called the cottage, cottage something or other. It's all like the plaid papers. And it's a, um, it's a huge pack of papers. I think you get 48 sheets in the pack. You get tons of paper. And it's all like, like big plaid and little plaid of many, many different colors. That is also in the 2022 holiday catalog. All right, so that is that. And so the next thing, let's see. The next thing I'm gonna do is, you have this, I call it a pop-out bar. It's this piece right here that you um, will stick on your, your, whatever you're putting on the middle. So that is, and this is, 
has to be this dimension. Um, it's one by six and three eighths, and then it's scored a half inch on either side. So there's a half inch there and a half inch there. And the reason why it has to be the same, you know, this size is because it just fits right in there. So that's really not a negotiable measurement. And then I have, um, this is actually really old paper, but I, I like the colors together. It's actually, if you guys have been with Stampin' Up! for a long time, it's Kiwi Kiss. So that's a lo old color. One that I liked and I was sad when it went away. So I put that on there. And that, what did I say? Optional paper, three quarter inch by five. All right, so now what we're gonna do, you can use glue, um, but I'm actually gonna use um, tear and tape for this one. On those little half inch pieces reason why I'm using turn tape is so it will stick faster and I'm not going to have glue sliding all over the place. And so that's just going to go right in the center. Sometimes with 3D projects, really I suppose the two good things are, are this glue and also tear and tape. So I want that flat and it just fits in there because of that eighth inch. It just fits with it that those folds. Oh, I guess I could have slid it over a little bit more, but that's fine. Okay, so then this also is the last integral piece of this type of card, and Sue called it a wobble. <laughs> and so it's one by three, and it's scored at half, one, two, two and a half. And so you're gonna fold it this way. So it kind of looks like, I don't know, this shape. I don't know what shape this would be. And I'm going to put tear and tape on these two and then that's going to go down like that. And it's not going to be seen so it doesn't matter what color it is. So you could you could put your I have one. This one's dry already. You could put this flat down and it would still as you opened it, it would still kind of kind of pop out. But this wobble, it just kind of, it just is kind of happy and it floats there. And it, it really does stick it out more, more of a pop-up. So that's, that's why it's there. All right, so we're going to take these off. Okay, and I'm just going to eyeball the center, although the center is right there with that score line. And I'm just going to put that right on top so you can kind of see it's right there. Okay, so that's really the construction of the card. So I'm going to move this right. So the rest is all customization. So I'm going to stamp my apples. That one, again, is there. It's already dry because you'll see it's going to be wet for a little bit. So I am using watercolor paper. So it's nice and thick. I'm using my Stamparatus. I'm gonna close my glue so it doesn't clot. Um, and I tend to, I just leave this washi tape here. It's been here for a long time. And I, you can put paper and stamp anywhere, but I tend to use the same area because um, this is big enough for a whole, you know, card. And if I'm doing multiples, I know where to put it because my stamps are already in alignment, like they're already set up. So um, no matter where it is, you know, you can put your, wherever your mark is going to be, it's constant. So I know where to, I'm just looking for these, where um, to put the paper. So I already lined up my stamps, like I said, they're all set there. And, oh, did I not bring up the ink? That's important. Okay, I'm going to go get the ink. All right, so here's my ink. I'm using stays on black because I'm going to use my watercolor pencils. So that's the ink you want to use for this because we're going to introduce water. And then somehow, sometimes I notice when the photopolymer stamps, when you use them, they really stick to the paper. So 
when you lift it up, it actually kind of, the paper goes with it, but I don't want it to in case I have to re-ink again. So if you just lift it up a little bit and then the paper separates, then you can lift it up. So see, didn't do that so well. So let's see, let's re-ink that again. Hopefully, you know, didn't shouldn't have moved. Lift it up till the paper separates. There we go. So that's just a little trick. Otherwise, if I picked it up and the paper moved, I'd have to start over because I wouldn't get the paper exactly in the same spot. All right, same thing. I'm gonna lift the paper up a little bit, separated, and there we go. So there are apples. Actually, I'm just gonna color while it's right there. Um, I am using watercolored pencils. I'm gonna use Cherry Cobbler. I found that the real red color um, that's too orangey. Look at that. That's the difference. That's the cherry cobbler red and that's the real red, which to me, those don't look like apples. <laughs> so we're going to use cherry cobbler. Actually, I'm going to cover my ink. Okay. And I'm just going to, I tend to color in circles. So we're going to, um, go over this with the water painters. And kind of make it like a watercolor painting. You know, impress your friends that you did like this beautiful watercolored art. And really, <laughs> you can see I'm not coloring all that great, but it's gonna come together beautifully. All right, and so there's already these lines in here, so I'm just gonna go over these lines a little bit darker. It's kind of where the, the roundness of the apple, but just to give a little detail, we don't want them all to be like flat red. Right, we want them to have a little colorization on it. If you wanted to add more where the shadows are, you can. You have to be careful with the coloring because I'll just go crazy. Okay, so I'll stop with that one. And then the leaves, I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use Garden Green and Old Olive just to kind of give a little. So it's not all um, exactly the same. Okay. And you saw that, that, that is not very good coloring at all. And then for the basket, I'm going to start with, this is actually Cajun Craze. I'm just going to do the, um, I don't know what this part's called. This part of the basket, Cajun Craze. And then this is early espresso. I'm just going to introduce a little bit of that. I'm not going to color over the whole thing. Again, I don't want it to be a flat picture of coloring. And then early espresso here. And do you see how I'm just coloring really lightly? Um, I'm not like really coloring because it, I think it'd be too saturated if I did that. And then I have, I think this is basic gray just for the handle. All right, so not very good coloring. And that's okay. So I have my aqua, oh, that's what they used to be called, the water painter. It comes three to a pack and there's um, three different types of tips. So that's the tip I'm going to use. Um, you can, well, actually it's empty. You can put water in here by unscrewing it and putting water and then you could, where it says push there, you can squeeze, get a little water out and start coloring. Or you can be lazy and use it like a paintbrush and just dip it in water. So again, I'm doing that coloring motion in circles. You don't want to, you don't want too much water because it'll get really watery. You can always go back over something. And I'm doing each apple individually rather than just going straight across because I think I would lose a little bit of the individuality of the apples. They would kind of bleed into each other. All right, so doesn't that look better than my watercolor, pe my pencil colorings? All right, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm just going to swish that till it's dry or clear. And I'm going to go in the direction of like the wood grain. And so now those two colors I added there are blending together. 
Be careful, I see the little red kind of came down. So actually, you can take a little paper towel and take some of that off. A little brown back in there. I'll go back and add a little red in there. But I didn't want the, the red to bleed into the basket. And then I'm just going to trim my paper. And same thing, I'm following that wood grain. And then I have that little handle. And I'm actually, so I'm just going to pick up a little of that red that was left there and add it right back in there. Okay, pretty easy, um, but effective. So I'm gonna put that aside, let it dry. But again, I have another one. So I'm gonna use that one. Doesn't take too, too long, but too long for you guys to sit and wait and watch it dry. All right, so we are done with this. Put that aside. Let's bring back our Card base, and so I have um, a cherry cobbler. So this is I did this three and a quarter by three and a quarter. It all depends on what you're gonna have in the middle. You can have something that's really big. You can have something that's really small. That's all your customization. Look at two sides of a piece of paper, especially with a watercolor paper because it's so thick. <laughs> and that's gonna go on here. So this cherry cobbler piece is three and a half square. And I'm going to, I actually, I could, I was going to put the glue there, but actually I want it to dry faster because I'm just about done. So I'm just going to put a little tear and tape there. I'm excited to make more of these styles of cards. They're kind of, they're fun. It, this particular one had like a lot of cutting involved, but um, they're kind of fun. You can do it assembly style. All right, so then there we go. So it has that wobble, kind of fun. So then you could leave it like that, or I have pre-stamped, you know, because it's my get well card, a little message for the inside, because the other message will be on the belly band. And so they may or may, I'm gonna put this one lower. They may or may not keep that belly band. The only thing is you want to make sure that it's within the fold because otherwise um, it will get crushed when you fold it over. All right, let me just show you how you put the belly band together. It's a little trick. So this is 11 inches. That's as long as my paper. If you have a 12 inch piece of paper, then you don't have to do my trick, but I'm going to show you with regular paper. So it's uh, one inch by 11. And I have a little decorative piece there. So I'm just going to put my paper, I'm going to center it as best I can, and just fold it so it's not scored or anything. I just fold it over, and you can see that these two do not touch or meet each other. That's okay. And that's why I have it in the front rather than the back, because I'm going to kind of put this piece of paper right on top. So it's going to hide that gap. And what's even going to hide it better is my little label. So I have, I already stamped this Get Well is from an older stamp set that is retired. But I love it, so I still use it. So that's going to go right on there. So I'm just going to put glue there and put that right on top. Hold it for a second, and that's it. That is the card, so it looks like that. And I'm just gonna carefully take that off because it's still a little wet. But whoever you send it to who's not feeling well will take this off. Oh, I got glue on there. And open it up and say, oh, that's so pretty. And so that, for some reason, does bend, but they can just fix it. And hopefully they'll, you can tell them or they'll figure it out and say, huh, and then they'll open it up like that. All right, so that is the, I have this one's, I have a couple, 
closed and open. What did she call it again? The Pop Out Bendy Fun Fold Cards. A mouthful. Um, but hopefully you see the versatility in that. Um, there's lots you can do with it. Um, I think it's kind of fun to have Christmas trees popping out or that Yeti would pop out. That would look cute um, for holidays or all sorts of reasons. So I thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this. Definitely comment if you did. Um, be sure if you don't, haven't already to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You could just pick that choose that subscribe button. I think you just need to click on it. Um, if you do not get my regular emails, every Tuesday my emails go out. So go to my blog, mailsomethingpretty.com and you can sign up right there and you'll get a whole bunch of good stuff right to your inbox. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.